Hi class, welcome to the presentation of Coloring Knots. Our group members are Erica, Gabriel, and Alex. At the first beginning, I will introduce some definitions and concepts to you. If you have a USB cable around you, then you can just pull it out and make the ends meet. Now you have created a knot. If you want to make it more complex, you can make some twists and make some crossings here, then make the ends meet. This is another knot. So now we will give out the formal definition for a knot. A knot is a smooth embedding of a circle into R3 space that is staying. If we have a circle here, we can embed it to this R3 space. You have noticed that we can have infinitely many embeddings into R3. So to reduce the workload, we introduce the definition of knot class. We define two knots are equivalent if one can be deformed to the other smoothly. That is saying, if we have those two knots, they are equivalent. And if I twist it and pull it longer, then those two knots are still equivalent to each other. It's really hard to study a 3D object. So we introduce this 2D object here, knot projection. We define knot projection as a map from a circle to a plane which is smooth except for finitely many points. At each of those points, an inner crossing is chosen. So let's take a look at those projections. For the first example, we get a circle projection here. So every point is smooth here. But for the second one, we get an infinite symbol. Here is a crossing. We need a defined inner crossing. So although the knot is a loop string, which cannot cross itself in R3 space, but a knot projection is a loop string, which could cross itself, but needs definitions for ender crossings. We can not only project this knot onto XY plane, but also project it to any other planes in R3. So we have infinitely many knot projections to study. As how we defined equivalent knot class before, we define two knot projections equivalent if one can be deformed into another one smoothly. For example, we have a knot projection here, and if we smoothly deform the arc there into this one, although those two knot projections have different forms, but they belong to the equivalent knot projection class. For one knot class, it could have many inequivalent knot projections. For example, imagine we have this chip here, and we project it onto x, y, and the y plane. Those two projections are equivalent, because we have a crossing here, which is not a smooth deformation. So, in order to communicate inequivalent knot projections, we need to play with crossings. Here, we have Redmaster Moves, which contains the following three elements. Redmaster Moves can help us transfer from one knot projection to the other. For example, the first one has one crossing here, but with the first move, we can resolve it. Then we get a trivial knot. With Redmaster Moves, we can organize our knot and knot projections in this way. We have three different knot classes here, trivial knot, some knot, and a trifoil. A knot class can have several inequivalent knot projection classes, and among those elements, they can reach each other by Redmaster moves. The same color represents the same knot projection classes, and different colors are communicating by Redmaster moves, which means if you start from a knot projection by Redmaster moves, you are able to reach every other knot projection classes belonging to the same knot class. However, there is no Redmaster move sequences, which can help us connecting two knot projections coming from different knot classes, like this red border. Projections live inside the red squares and belong to a specific knot class. They don't communicate to each other. This big picture tells us we only need to study a projection of a knot. A projection is able to determine the knot itself that is saying, if we're given this kind of knot projection, then it contains enough information of its knot class. If two knot projections are 
related by a series of our moves. For example, this orange one and this blue one, then the corresponding knots are equivalent because this trivial knot is the knot for those two knot projections. It's clear that it's enough to study the knot projections. And for knot projection, what do we care the most? We have noticed that the unreduced crossings are the key point that distinguishes different knot classes. So we will identify each crossing and represent it by a square with predefined undercrossing directions. For this infinite symbol shape like knot projection, we should identify the crossing here and replace it by a square with undercrossing predefined in this way. Similarly, we can transfer a trifle into this kind of planar graph. This cross-oriented representation just changed this topological problem into a combinatorial one. A valid knot projection under this representation should be a planar with a Hamiltonian cycle without smaller other cycles. For our future goals, we want to know is there an invariant during those deformations? And as a common combinatorial problem, we want to know whether we can color it, how many colorings we can have. As for its algebraic characters, can we define some operation to make those knot classes a group, a field, or a ring? Is there any prime knot accordingly? Gabriel and Alex will answer those questions.